Nathan Bedford Forrest was born in a poor American family in Bedford, Connecticut, Tennessee on July 13, 1821. He and his twin sister, Fanny, were the two oldest of 12 children. Half of them died of typhoid. His father recovered from typhoid, but died from the effects five years later. A few years later, his mother, Miriam, remarried to Marshall John Luxton and had three boys and a girl with him. At the outset of the American Civil War, Forrest had a 10-year-old sister. In 1841, Forrest went into business with his uncle Jonathan Forrest in Hernando, Mississippi. His uncle was killed there in 1845 during an argument with the Matlock brothers. In retaliation, Forrest shot and killed two of them and wounded two others with a knife. Forrest became a businessman, planter, and slaveholder. He owned several cotton plantations in the Delta region of West Tennessee. He had become a millionaire and one of the richest men in the South having amassed a personal fortune that he claimed was worth $1.5 In 1845, Nathan married Marianne Montgomery, the daughter of a Presbyterian minister. They had two children together, William Montgomery Bedford Forrest in 1846 and Fanny in 1849. After the American Civil War broke out, Forrest returned to Tennessee from his Mississippi ventures, enlisted in the Confederate States Army, and trained at Fort Wright in Randolph, Tennessee. On July 14, 1861, he joined Captain Jozo White's company, Tennessee Mounted Rifles, as a private. Upon seeing how badly equipped the CSA was, Forrest offered to buy horses and equipment with his own money for a regiment of Tennessee volunteer soldiers. They commissioned him a lieutenant colonel and authored him to recruit and train a battalion of Confederate Mounted Rangers. In October 1861, Forrest was given command of a regiment, the 3rd Tennessee Cavalry. Forrest received praise for his skill and courage during an early victory at the Battle of Sacramento, where he routed a Union force by personally leading a cavalry charge. Forrest distinguished himself further at the Battle of Fort Donelson in February 1862. After his cavalry captured a Union artillery battery, he broke out of a Union army siege. A month later, Forrest was back in action at the Battle of Shiloh. In the Battle of Fallen Timbers, he drove through the Union skirmish line not realizing that the rest of his men had halted their charge when reaching the full Union Brigade. Forrest charged the brigades single-handedly and soon found himself surrounded. He emptied his Colt Army revolvers into the swirling mass of Union soldiers and pulled out his saber, hacking and slashing. A Union infantryman on the ground beside him fired a musket ball at Forrest, nearly knocking him out of his saddle. Steadying himself and his mount, he used one arm to lift the Union soldier by the shirt collar and then wielded him as a human shield, before casting his body aside after he found his way to safety. By early summer, Forrest commanded a new brigade of cavalry regiments. In July, he led them into Middle Tennessee under orders to launch a cavalry raid. On July 13, 1862, he led them into the First Battle of Murfreesboro, which Forrest is said to have won. Promoted in July 1862 to Brigadier General, Forrest was given command of a Confederate cavalry brigade. Again, Bragg ordered a raid, this one into West Tennessee, to disrupt the communications of Union forces under Grant, which were threatening the city of Vicksburg, Mississippi. On the ensuing raid, he showed his brilliance, leading thousands of Union soldiers in West Tennessee on a wild goose chase to try to locate his fast-moving forces. Never staying in one place long enough to be attacked, Forrest led his troops in raids as far north as the banks of the Ohio River in southwest Kentucky. As a result, General Grant was forced to revise and delay the strategy of his Vicksburg campaign. The Confederate Army dispatched him with a small force into the backcountry of northern Alabama and West Georgia to defend against an attack of 3,000 Union cavalrymen commanded by Colonel Abel Strait. Forrest chased Strait's men for 16 days, harassing them all the way. On May 3rd, Forrest caught up with Strait's unit east of Cedar Bluff, Alabama. Forrest had fewer men than the Union side, but he repeatedly paraded some of them around a hilltop to appear a larger force and convinced Strait to surrender his 1,500 exhausted troops. Forrest served with the main army at the Battle of Chickamauga. Like several others under Bragg's command, he urged an immediate follow-up attack to recapture Chattanooga, which had fallen a few weeks before. Bragg failed to do so, upon which Forrest was quoted by saying, What does he fight battles for? On a positive note, however, on December 4th, 1863, Forrest was promoted to the rank of Major General. On April 12, 1864, General Forrest led his forces in the attack and, and capture of Fort Pillow in Henning, Tennessee, on the Mississippi River. According to reports filed 
by Union Captain Goodman, Union forces never surrendered. Forrest's men insisted that the Union soldiers, although fleeing, kept their weapons and frequently turned to shoot, forcing the Confederates to keep firing in self-defense. At the time of the massacre, General Grant had already transferred to the east to command all Union troops. Major General William Tecumseh Sherman, commander of the military division of the Mississippi, which included Tennessee, wrote, The massacre at Fort Pillow occurred April 12, 1864, and had been the subject of congressional inquiry. No doubt Forrest's men acted like a set of barbarians shooting down the helpless Negro's garrison, shooting down the helpless Negro garrison after the fort was in their possession. But I am told that Forrest personally disclaims any active participation in the assault and that he stopped the firing as soon as he could. I also take it for granted that Forrest did not lead the assault in person and consequently that he was to the rear, out of sight if not of hearing at the time. Forrest's greatest victory came on June 10, 1864 when his 3,500 man force clashed with 8,500 men commanded by Union Brigadier General Samuel D. Sturges at the Battle of Bryce's Crossroad. Here, his mobility of force and superior tactics led to victory. He swept the Union forces from a large expanse of southwest Tennessee and northern Mississippi. Forrest set up a position for an attack to repulse the pursuing force commanded by Sturges, who had been sent to impede Forrest from destroying Union supplies and fortifications. When Sturges' Federal Army came upon the crossroads, they collided with Forrest's cavalry. Sturges ordered his infantry to advance to the front line to counteract the cavalry. The infantry, tired and weary and suffering under the heat, were quickly broken and sent into mass retreat. Forrest sent a full charge after the retreating army and captured 16 artillery pieces, 176 wagons, and 1,500 stands of small arms. One month later, Forrest experienced tactical defeat at the Battle of Tulipo in 1864. Concerned about Union supply lines, Major General William Tecumseh Sherman sent a force under the command of Major General Andrew J. Smith to deal with Forrest. The Union forces drove the Confederates from the field and Forrest was wounded in the foot, but his forces were not wholly destroyed. He continued to oppose Union forces in the West for the remainder of the war. Forrest led other raids that summer and autumn, including a famous one into Union-held downtown Memphis in August 1864, and another one and another on a Union supply depot at Johnsonville, Tennessee on November 4th to 5th, 1864, causing millions of dollars of damage. In December, during General John Bell Hood's Tennessee campaign, he fought alongside General Hood, the newest and last commander of the Confederate Army of Tennessee, in the Second Battle of Franklin. Facing a disastrous defeat, Forrest argued bitterly that Hood demanded permission to cross the river and cut off the escape route of Union Major General John M. Schofield's army. He made the belated attempt, but it was too late. After his defeat at Franklin, Hood continued to Nashville. Hood ordered Forrest to conduct an independent raid against the Murfreesboro garrison. Forrest engaged Union forces near Murfreesboro on December 5, 1864, in what would be known as the Third Battle of Murfreesboro. A portion of Forrest's command broke and ran. In 1865, Forrest attempted, without success, to defend the state of Alabama against Brigadier General James H. Wilson's raid. H. Wilson defeated Forrest at the Battle of Selma, April 2, 1865. When he received news of Lee's surrender, Forrest also chose to surrender. On May 9, 1865, at Gainesville, Forrest read his farewell address. With slavery abolished after the war, Forrest suffered a major financial setback as a former slave trader. He became interested in the area around Crowley's Ridge during the war and settled in Memphis, Tennessee. In 1866, Forrest and C.C. McCreener were contracted to finish the Memphis and Little Rock Railroad. He built a commissionary in a town forming along the rail route, which most residents were calling Forest Town, incorporated as Forest City, Arkansas in 1870. He later found employment, he later found employment at the Selma-based Marion and Memphis Railroad and eventually became the company's president. And under his direction, the company went bankrupt, nearly ruined as the result of failure. During 1873, Forrest wrote a letter to the then General-in-Chief of the United States Army, William Tecumseh Sherman, and offered his services in case of war with Spain. Sherman, who in the Civil War had recognized what a deadly foe Forrest was, replied after the crisis settled down. He thanked Forrest for the offer and stated that, had war broken out, 
he would have considered it an honor to have served side by side with him. Forrest was an early member of the Ku Klux Klan. The KKK was formed by veterans of the Confederate Army in Pulaski, Tennessee in 1866 and soon expanded throughout the state and beyond. The organization had grown to the point where an experienced commander was needed and Forrest fit the bill. Forrest was sworn in as a member. The title Grand Wizard was chosen because General Forrest was known as the Wizard of the Saddle during the American Civil War. After the American Civil War had ended, the Union States Congress began passing the Reconstruction Acts to lay out requirements for the former Confederate states to be readmitted to the Union. One of the stipulations was specifically granting voting rights to black men. In an 1868 interview by a Cincinnati newspaper, Forrest claimed that the Klan had 40,000 members in Tennessee and 550,000 total members throughout the southern states. He said he sympathized with them but denied any formal connection. After only a year as Grand Wizard in January 1869, faced with an ungovernable membership employing methods that seemed increasingly counterproductive, Forrest issued KKK General Order No. 1. It is therefore ordered and declared that the masks and costumes of this order be entirely abolished and destroyed, henceforth dissolving the Ku Klux Klan. In August 1874, after the murder of four blacks by a lynch mob after they were arrested for defending themselves at a barbecue, Forrest wrote to Tennessee Governor Brown offering to exterminate the white marauders who disgraced their race by this cowardly murder of Negroes. By the end of his life, Forrest's racial attitudes changed. In 1875, he advocated for the admission of blacks into law school, and he lived to fully renounce his involvement with the Klan that he headed and abolished. In July 1875, Forrest demonstrated that his personal sentiments on the issue of race now differed from those of the Klan. When he was invited to give a speech before an organization of black Southerners advocating racial reconciliation, the Independent Order of Pole Bearers Association, at this, his last public appearance, he made what the New York Times described as a friendly speech, during which, when offered a bouquet of flowers by a black woman, he accepted them as a token of reconciliation between the races and harmony between black and white Americans. His speech started off with, Ladies and gentlemen, I accept the flowers as a momentum of reconciliation between the white and colored races of the southern states. I accept it more particularly as it comes from a colored lady, for if there is anyone on God's earth who loves the ladies, I believe it is myself. This was followed by immense applause and laughter. He later stated, We were born on the same soil, breathe the same air, and live in the same land. Why then can we not live as brothers? Forrest died in Memphis in October 1877 at the home of his brother Jesse, reportedly from acute complications of diabetes. His eulogy was delivered by his recent spiritual mentor, and former Confederate chaplain George Tucker Stainback. Forrest was buried at Elmwood Cemetery. In 1904, the remains of Forrest and his wife Mary were disinterred from Elmwood and moved into Memphis City Park, originally named Forrest Park, in his honor. That has since been renamed Health Sciences Park. His descendants continued the military tradition. A grandson, Nathan Bedford Forrest II, became Commander-in-Chief of the Sons of Confederate Veterans and a Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan and a Grand Dragon of the reformed Ku Klux Klan. A great-grandson, Nathan Bedford Forrest III, graduated from West Point and rose to the rank of Brigadier General in the U.S. Army Air Corps. He was killed during a bombing raid over Nazi Germany in 1943. In the 1994 film Forrest Gump, the titular character says that he was named after his ancestor, General Nathan Bedford Forrest.